I've talked about using these TFT screens with the Pico in recent videos. Handling big color screens and SPI interfaces is not really the place to start. The first screen I connected to a Pico was a little 128 by 64 pixel OLED black and white or black and blue screen. This used an easier interface called the I2C and it's quite easy to drive with some great libraries. Let me tell you how. Hi, I'm John, your concierge to the world of the Raspberry Pi Pico, robotics, IoT, and other fun tech. Please remember to subscribe and join the community. These little OLED screens are cheap and easy to find. They come in different sizes, normally 128 by 64 pixel or 128 by 32 pixels. They're driven by the SSD 1306 IC which manages the interface and buffering for the screen. In this video, I'll show you how to connect these up and drive them using a library by David Schremann for the Pico. I've got a couple of examples to share. If you like this video and it helps your learning or projects, why not buy me a virtual cup of coffee or lunch or a holiday even? Use the super thanks button below the video and please hit the like button on the video and subscribe for more. I do appreciate it. So it's these little OLED displays that I think most of us start with when we start putting a display against our PK. And they're great and they come in a couple of varieties. These are the um, 128 by 64 pixel um, version and you see it's all got four connections. They've always got four connections on these and you can see all of the electronics at the back. This one is address selectable. We'll talk about addresses in a bit and how that works uh, on the interface, which is called an I2C that these things use. The smaller version of it is 128 by 32. So it's more of an elongated format, um, which is also quite nice for uh, things. And I've happened to have put right angle connectors on this one, but um, you can buy these in all of these formats. This video is sponsored by Cancun. Cancun are a friendly online retailer in the UK for modules, components and tools. Cancun also stock the OLED SSD1306 display modules I'm using in this video. Cancun has kindly offered a discount to my channel viewers on your first order. Just quote Dr. John EA20 at checkout to get a 20% discount. This excludes electronic test equipment and tools. So go check out Cancun today. Our display module is going to connect to the Pico using something called I2C or IIC, which is an interfacing technique originally created by Texas Instruments, but now really common for connecting microcontrollers to peripherals. It basically is a two wire connection strategy where you have um, the two wires as SCA and SCL. SCA is the serial data, and SCL is the serial clock. Sometimes that's marked up as SCK. Of course, these devices are gonna require power and because we're on a Pico, we want that power to be 3.3 volts. So you could do and can do um, IIC or I2C at five volts, but obviously we want 3.3 volt devices. So you'll commonly see that we have VDD, which is the positive voltage. So that goes to three, three volts ground which goes to uh, negative and then our SCA and SCL connections which are going to go between the display and our Pico. Those normally need to be pulled up. Now there are ways, different ways of doing that so they're pulled up by a resistor to the high voltage to the 3.3 volts. There are a number of ways of doing that. Quite often modules already have pull up resistors within them so you don't need to worry about it at all. So that can start causing problems when you start adding multiple devices onto the same chain. Um, you could put in discrete resistors and that's definitely an option. Picking the right value from this, for the resistor can be uh, troubling um, uh, in certain situations, but um, that's also an option. Or we can use the internal resistor bank within the Pico, which is what I'm actually going to do in this example. So I2C works as a bus, so we can talk to a number of devices all connected to the same two pins. 
And we do that because each device has its own unique um, address. And there are 128 addresses from 0 to 127 or um, hex 7F. Now the device we're talking to today is nearly always on address 3C. Now with some modules you can actually adjust that and uh, add one, two or three um, uh, to that address. So you could be on 3D, 3E, 3F, etc. But generally out of the packet they're on 3C and that's what we're going to use to talk to it today. So on the other side of this world we've got the Pico and the Pico actually has two I2C channels available, I2C0 and I2C1. And these can be mapped to lots of different GPIO ports all over the device. Now each GPIO uh, pair on here can only be matched to either I2C0 or I2C1. You can't interchange them, um, but you, you, you know, we can map things around and move things around due to the architecture of the Pico. So for this example, I'm going to use I2C0 and I'm going to put that on GPIO 12 and 13. So let's have a look at how I'm going to connect my display to my Pico. So first of all, I'm going to power it from the Pico's power. So ground is going to go to one of the ground pins on the Pico and VCC to the 3.3 volt output on the Pico. Then the data lines are going to go directly to the ports uh, GPIO 12 and 13. I'm also going to put an LED on here so I'm actually going to still continue the blink example that we've seen in a previous video. So a resistor and an LED will be on port between GPIO 2 and ground. So you can see this looks like this on my board slightly more difficult to see the connections than the diagram obviously. You can find all of the code for today's example on GitHub. Um, here is the repo and I've got two projects in here. Um, OLED12864 is a simple example and one that we're going to talk about first and Animation12864 is a slightly more complicated example demonstrating the animation of a little GIF image onto the display. Both of these examples use the Pico SSD1306 library from David Schramm. This is a great little library and the one that I use most often, though there are some other libraries available that will also work with these modules. So over in the repo we've got the two examples, the Animate 128 by 64 that I'll come to in a bit, and OLED 12864, which is the one we're going to start with. Now, both of these are going to share the library because I didn't want to pull down the library twice for you. So the library is this Pico SSD 1306. It's only got a couple of files in there, really, um, just the .c file and .h file. So if we have a look at our OLED example, and as I often do, let's start with having a look at the CMake file. And you see we're going to tell um, the system where the library is for that SSD 1306 and then include a make file to pull that in. Uh, apart from that, everything else is pretty standard in here. Um, and then if we have a look at the CMake file uh, in the source folder, um, you see we've only actually got one file involved in this, the main.cpp file, but we are linking to both the standard library and this SSD 1306 library in order to build our example. So all of the codes actually in main. Um, so first of all, I'm going to include the header file for this SSD 1306. And I'm going to need to put that in an external C um, uh, directive because um, it's actually is going to link as C code and if I don't do that, um, then I will have problems with the linking step. This library just doesn't do that and doesn't work itself for a C++ context. And I want to do this in C++. So the code itself, though, uh, in this example, is really based on what I did in the Blink external LED example. So um, you will see a lot of the code down here is just what we did when we set up an external LED and we flashed it and the LED is on GPIO2. 
to work with these um, OLED screen, I need to do some initialization of the OLED, and that's what's going on up here. So this chunk of code here is, is the initialization. First of all, let's initialize our, our, our I2C system. And we've got two I2Cs as we've seen. So I2C0 is the one I'm gonna use. So we're gonna initialize that, and we're gonna tell it what speed we're gonna use there for the bus on there. I'm going to then put it on GPIOs 12 and 13, and I'm gonna use the internal pull-up resistors on the Pico to pull both of those pins up. And then I'm gonna tell that, that the function of those pins is I2C. Now that automatically means that that will be I2C0 because you can only run I2C0 on 12 and 13. Uh, we could put I2C0 on some other ports as well, but 12 and 13 can only do I2C0, it couldn't do I2C1. I'm then going to define a object, a, a structure, which is going to take all of the data around our OLED and it's going to be our handle to it. And I'm going to have to set a variable in there, the external VCC, to false. Otherwise, you don't get any output. Um, so that's something to bear in mind when you're using this library. And then we can run initialize, which is we'll set everything up. So uh, the initialize takes our OLED um, variable for that data structure, the width, the height, the address that this is going to be on, and we see that's uh, 3C, and the I2C chunk. And provided that succeeds, we can then go and do our first bit of work on that. So we're going to basically clear it. We're then going to draw a test on, on that uh, OLED, and then we're going to um, show that test. And so we always do this, we always tend to clear things first, and then after we've uh, put things into the frame buffer, then we show the frame buffer, so put the frame buffer actually on the screen, which is what that show is doing there. So what's draw test doing? Well, that's really our test stuff. So all I'm doing here is I'm gonna draw a couple of strings. I'm gonna draw a string on our OLED um, at position zero by two, uh, with a scale size of two, and uh, we want to scale it up a bit, because actually if you do it at scale one, it's almost unreadable, or well, certainly for people with old eyes like me. Um, and then we're going to put the text testing. So that's all we're doing, is putting that. And then I'm going to actually put a line underneath it as well, and draw a line under there. That's all that draw test is going to do. So that will put the first thing up on the screen. I actually do have another function in here as well, called uh, draw blink. And basically that's going to just draw the test again, but then it's going to add to it the word blink below it. So what I'm then going to do is, as the LED blinks, is I'm going to draw first the, the test when the LED or when the test when the LED is off, I'll just draw it saying testing. And when the LED is on, I'll draw it saying testing plus blink underneath. So we should see the word blink actually uh, blinking in time to the LED. So here we have on test, and you can see that as my LED is blinking, so we're getting the word blink uh, flashing in time on our um, OLED display. Quite nicely done there. Um, and now you notice I'm using a little homemade module for my LEDs. It just made things a little bit simpler and easier for me to just put things together on the board. So let's have a look at my second example, which is animation. 12864. And this is basically just taking a little black and white uh, icon and actually animating it across the display. To take my image and get it into my C code, I'm going to use this online conversion for image to CPP. And so I'm going to give it my little icon there. And that's a 64 by 64 bit icon. Um, I can change whether I'm interested in background or, or foreground color, but you can see by the preview, I really want that set to white as foreground. Um, there are a few other options there I could set, but the, the thoughts are fine. And then we're just gonna get a plain set of binary codes. I'm gonna need to swap the order of the bits just to make it work with my algorithm. Um, and then we get a whole set of codes there that I can assign to an array. So the animation example is actually very similar.
So let's just go in and go straight into the code. Firstly, bellboy.h, this is where I'm going to define this constant bellboy, which is an array of all of those values that I got out of uh, that conversion utility. So that is the image of our, our bellboy. And then in source, what I'm going to do in the setup main.cpp is um, I'm going to initialize the uh, OLED screen like I did previously. And then I'm just going to run a little loop and I'm basically going to keep moving our um, bellboy from a position where it's actually just off screen to the left to it's just off screen on the right. And that's what that loop is doing there. So if we have a look at the actual code for drawing it, what I'm basically going to do is clear the screen. Then, um, of course, I'm again going to go and draw the bellboy, which is that loop there. And then afterwards, I'm going to show it. Um, similar to what we did with text. The difference here is it actually I need to go and interpret my bitmap and find all of the uh, pixels and actually place the pixels in the correct place on the screen. And that's what this loop is doing really. So it's just um, creating or going through every pixel in our image by uh, going from zero to 64 to zero to 64. And then I'm going to calculate what my, um, uh, which byte I'm, I'm looking at within that structure and then what the mask, so what the bit is within that byte that I'm interested in to get to this particular pixel. Then I'll check to see if that pixel should be lit and if it should, I'll light it. And that's what we're doing for or repeatedly all the time for every pixel in the image. So we, here we have our bellboy pushing his cart across our little screen. Okay, his legs don't actually move, but um, you get the point and we could do much more complicated animations if we really wanted to. But you can see how we could work with pixels too. These little OLED displays are small, low power and easy to use. They're perhaps not the conversation piece of a colour TFD display or an LED display like the Unicom range. They are though both useful and quick to use. Though I've used David's library in this video, there are a few other libraries around with slightly different features for the Pico. Exploring other libraries might be a fun way to learn more about these modules and how libraries can be used with the Pico. If this video or any of my videos helped you, why not buy me a virtual cup of coffee or lunch to say thank you? There's now the super thanks feature live on my channel. Just click the button. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, then please hit that like button it encourages me to make more. And please subscribe to my channel so you don't miss the next video. Bye bye for now.